I began watching him probably September-ish, October-ish of 2020. And I really liked Mark. I really liked him. I thought his interviewing was fantastic. His array of people that he had on the show. He was funny. He was charismatic. I really liked him. And, and, and I really connected because he was claiming and saying all the right words of spirituality, but he had a very mainstream life. And in that sort of at a high level described most of my life. Now, I didn't have anywhere near the success that he had in his 3D life. You know, I didn't nowhere near it, but I had led a very mainstream life up until my awakening. So I felt a kinship to him in that regard because not many people, most spiritual people up to this point that I met don't handle the 3D world. Like it's a, it's cause it's really challenging to be tapped in and aware of this and then to bring it down and try to navigate the third dimension insanity. So you, you really, it's really rare thus far in my experience to find, you know, almost across the board in my experience in nine years, the most, what I would call spiritually evolved people have next to nothing in the material world, material things, prestige, status, like it, I, my experience, and it's not huge, but it's not small either. Okay. So I, there was no red flags. I really thought he was the real deal. Okay. Next thing I did is I became a Patreon member. Patreon, for those of you who don't know, it's like a small, it's a small way to fund and support people. It, it's more geared towards artists and creators, people that are not playing the mainstream game. I have a Patreon page. Of course, I don't have any Patreons yet, but you got to have a page to start with. So Patreon is a way to support. And when all this started and I started obtaining information from all of these people, well, actually, I've supported these guys. I've used a 13 moon calendar since 2010. This is produced by Skytime, uh, 13moon.com. And uh, Eden and her, Eden Sky and her family have produced that for over 20 years. And I've been a Patreon member at $10 a month supporting them for like six years, I think. Long time. So I was familiar with Patreon. But until, you know, until all this nonsense hit, I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't really aware of anybody else in my world that I could support that way. So I was supporting a number of these, these spiritual people, these truthers, these people with bigger YouTube channels. I was supporting a number of them on Patreon, including Mark. I was only paying $5 a month, but I was doing it one because I really did want to support them. I really did like them. And two, I would be lying if I said I didn't then hope. I was hoping that then being part of a smaller group, you know, he's got 25,000 followers on his YouTube channel. Not easy to get a message through to somebody with that many followers. But in his Patreon group, I was one of like 40. I was one of 40. So I thought, ooh, I might have a chance to get a direct. And again, my ask was going to be this big, this big. You know, so all I was looking for was an opportunity for a one on one connection as a spiritual equal. And I thought becoming a Patreon member and therefore part of a much smaller group would give me that chance. Now, this is when the first red flag went up. There was no content, no content, none whatsoever. That was the first time that anybody I had supported on Patreon didn't even bother to put a welcome message definitely was a wet red flag but I kind of thought to myself okay maybe maybe he just hasn't gotten around to it yet you know I mean again he only had 40 45 44 people but the minimum is five bucks so it's a couple at least a couple hundred dollars a month like again I'm sorry but I don't like these are people giving their money to you you can't at least you know throw a message on there so that was the first red flag and you know, I pretty much ignored it right? Because I knew that, listen, I have been working quietly behind the scenes, but I've got a very big project. It's ready to launch. It serves 
it doesn't serve me, just me. It's got it, the whole design of it is to serve. Yeah, but I need exposure for it. I need exposure. So my ask was going to be pertaining to that. And then as the time would progress, there was another ask that I will get to. And that with the Iron Man one, if you've been following the story, it was the one having to do with Roseanne Barr, Mel Kay, getting a connection to, to Roseanne to do an event in, uh, related to Iron Man. I'll get to that later. Okay, so first red flag, but I'm a Patreon, part of a small group. Okay, March 19th, my first message to Mark through Patreon. Now, if you know Allison, if you've ever received an Allison communication, even a text, I am verbose. And I do not hold back and tell people how much they mean to me. I don't hold back in expressing what specifically I see in their light and their greatest, like, I don't hold back, man. So my first message to him was this whole page and the top of that page, okay? And this was in Patreon. This was in Patreon. And they're notified. You're notified when you get a message in Patreon. He's got 40, 45 people. And okay, first message. And no, it's not. I do include an old piece of work that has to do with one of the ways that I say I connect to him, which is storytelling, because I, I tell stories as well. I point out, you know, a number of things to him. The books that he said and referenced that I had read, no coincidences to me. So all of these are like little signs from the universe. I tell him, um, your poems are incredible and offer so much beyond the words and the sentiments expressed. You know, like, like I compliment him. You know, it's a genuine, real message. No response. Not terribly surprising, but a little bit. Okay. On 327, March 27th, I was pondering whether or not to accept Iron Man's offer to go to Hawaii and to St. George, Utah to, to work the half distance and the full distance Iron Man World Championships. It would have been my fourth year in Hawaii. And I love the people that I work with in Iron Man. And I love the teamwork that takes place within Iron Man. That world fuels me. That world fuels me in so many ways and not having it for all of 2020 was not easy for me, was not easy at all. So, but I, I, I knew that I probably had to say no because of how I explained in the earlier video. I was not going to be participating in testing and masks in any of that. And I didn't want to take the risk of getting stuck somewhere or quarantined. I, there, I knew the answer was no but I was meditating on it and seeing if I could receive even clearer guidance that to make me say otherwise. In that meditation, and this is the one that I referenced, this is when Mark, Mel Kay, and Roseanne Barr came to me. And why? Because like I said, if you're really playing the spiritual game and you're acknowledging that it's always about the now moment, and then it's always about being flexible and seeing the best way of combining all the puzzle pieces in the now moment. It, it, it like hit me like a ton of rocks. I'm like, or a ton of, a ton of bricks. I'm like, you know, Roseanne's in Hawaii. Roseanne is, is spiritual. You know, I've already explained this, but the link, and I'm like, man, now I would, I would potentially say yes to all the crap I'd have to do if it meant that I could potentially connect and Roseanne and I could potentially create some way to benefit that island in a, from a spiritual perspective, utilizing the influence of Iron Man during their event. Okay? So I did an episode on my podcast, episode 23, to the m &Ms, where I actually say Mark's name, Mel Kay's name, Roseanne Barr's name. And I emailed all three of them directly. And guess what? I heard back from Roseanne's son on the same day that I sent it. I heard back from Mel Kay's, I don't know if it's her significant other, Rob Reilly is the guy that handles Mel's communications. He wrote back and said he would pass it on to her. Now, I never heard anything further, but at least I got some acknowledgement from those two. Did not hear a word 
from Mark when I sent that to him the next day on March 28th in my second Patreon message, which is right here, right here, second Patreon message. And I started by saying, hey, at the risk of appearing absolutely off my rocker by contacting you again, unsolicited, I must follow my higher guidance and share the specific recording from yesterday. So then I tell him the story and I share it with him and I send him the second message on March 28th. And again, no response, okay? Remember, I'm in a group, one of about 44, He's being notified somewhere that he's got these messages. I'm paying money and can't even get a response back. Again, okay, another thing that I'm just kind of letting go, letting go, because I'm trying to get just a close to ask this ask, right? Okay, next, May 16th, I'm watching him interview this gentleman. And within the first two minutes, it's revealed, Mark reveals that the only place he lived in the States, because this guy is an American, was that he lived in Sarasota, Florida. He lived in Sarasota, Florida. I'm all about synchronicity. There are no accidents or coincidences. When he said that, I was like, now there's no way if he's really spiritual, there's no way because you understand the importance and the value of synchronicities. There's no way this can't help me build my case a little bit that I deserve to be responded to. So May 16th, I write back and I very simply say, this one's going to be brief. I repeat what I watch. And then I put, uh, you said that of the two times you have lived in America, you spent the most time in Florida specifically in Sarasota, and that you specifically had very emotional memories there. Well, I live in Sarasota, and something much bigger than me has been guiding me to you. May 16th, Patreon. Still, no response. Okay, now I continue to be a fan. I'm still ignoring all this, right? Even though I'm a little up, you know, I, I'm still, I still get it because I know we're still dancing in this bullshit 3D world where somebody with 20,000 followers is 20,000 times more important than I am. So I'm kind of used to that, right? I'm used to that with 3D normies. I'm not used to that with anybody that's claiming to be spiritual. So I'm overlooking this at this time but it's not taking much effort yet, but it is being stored in my mind. So now I continue to watch. I continue to watch his interviews. I continue to support people on his show. This is a dragon cleansing empowerment from my friend. We'll just call her the dragon lady. Paid for that, did that, and awesome. I love, I love the dragon lady. These guys, he had these guys on, the Red Pill Revolution. Bought two of these because anytime I buy a book, I buy two. Um, one for my little free library and one for my personal library. This guy, David Ian Rogers. I even emailed this guy, tried to get in contact with him, but I never heard back. He did an ebook, and I'm not, I didn't print all 48 pages, but just to kind of show that, okay, that I paid for and bought this guy's book, okay? So I'm supporting, I'm continuing to support him and I'm continuing to support people that are on his show. Okay, now comes the big stuff. July 28th is when he announced his course. The course name, how to monetize what's in your head, create a new income stream and become sovereign quickly. Lots of words there. And I'm gonna tell you, I remember when it came across my computer screen and my initial, <laughs> my initial reaction was hell no, because of one word there, monetize. I knew that this was not for me in terms of the content. I was like, hell 
no, this like the initial thing was there's no way this is, does not resonate with me. There is no way that I'm going to take this course. Um, but I watch the 21 minute preview and I watch it. And again, Mark is charming and you want to believe he's really a 5D guy about being equal with everyone. Right. And I'm like, oh God, man, I don't know, $500. That is not a small amount in my world. And, and the class starts, oh, by the way, in three days. So you have three days total to decide, right? I'm getting this message late on the 28th. So I got 20, I got three days to decide. So I ponder it and I slept on it and I meditated on it. And I knew that it was worth $500 to try because again, I could get that much closer. Now I would be part of a course. I'm paying. Now, you know, I, that was about the extent of what I thought. I just thought I knew the material was going to trigger me. I definitely knew that. And I definitely was taking, like I said, the expectation that, okay, now I have given this guy, now I'm about to pay $500, but surely I'm going to have a chance to get some sort of interaction with him as an equal, okay? Class starts on August 1st. High flying. Remember, one of my greatest weaknesses, I get too excited. I jump down the linear timeline because I'm very visionary. So I feel potentialities. I get really excited and I really felt I was stoked for the first few weeks of this class. But guess what I also knew almost immediately? That it was the 5D divine feminine energy that was rampant in his course that I was feeling, that was fueling it. That was the, it was the engine for that course was not him. It was these magnificent, and it was by far almost all women. And these were potent, beautiful, smart, awake women who clearly were of the higher, at least open to, aware of in some way where we're going and the higher dimensions. And it was that energy that I was feeling and, 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 and that's what I was excited about. Okay. They were the ones, all these ladies were nurturing the energy. We're, we're keeping it positive. The, the, it was the women without a doubt. And I knew that from day one. Okay. Next Whew. worked my ass off in those first three weeks, worked my ass off barely was sleeping. My life got tremendously out of balance, tremendously out of balance, stopped exercising, wasn't eating. Like I, I was, it was, I was so now granted I was flying high, right? But balance is one of the things I've struggled with in this life. And I've worked extremely hard to get my very convoluted, busy life balanced. And that was thrown completely out the window. And all sorts of red flags started to come up. All sorts of red flags. I was really struggling, not just with the material, but that I was feeling, I, I had, my whole world of work was up here. And now his material was bringing us down to the 3D and the technology and the appealing to the masses. and. It was just, I could feel myself being sucked down from where I have spent the vast majority of the past nine years. Like I was being brought lower by going through the course, but I couldn't wrap my fucking head around it. I couldn't understand. Mostly I couldn't understand why we would take, why we wouldn't take this extremely potent group, mostly of females, who were aware up here, why would we take that down to this? There was no room. And listen, as a teacher and a coach, 
You meet your students. If you're a good teacher or a good coach, you meet your students or your players where they are. And you give a shit about where they're trying to go. You don't come in and plow through. This is my course, my material, my way. I mean, you can. That's exactly what he did. But I, I, I was a teacher and a coach. So I was having like all sorts of issues because nothing was making sense to me. It was not aligned. It was not aligned. It wasn't aligned in feeling. It wasn't aligned in words. And it, it really, and I saw a role. Like I was active on the group. I was extremely positive because that's how I am. That's one of my greatest assets is coaching and, and keeping people excited. And like, I, I couldn't understand why he wasn't, and, and the re reality is because he doesn't know this energy. He doesn't know this energy. He can say the words, but he doesn't know it because there's no way you would take this energy if you were really dialing into it at its power and bring it down as much as we were bringing it down. And listen, he is an expert at his course material. That is no doubt. But his course material is of the paradigm that is collapsing. It's based on his tremendous success in a paradigm that's collapsing. So why? Why would we, why would we be doing that instead of not getting creative, getting co-creative, having two-way streets, using our imagination and going more towards where we're going instead of staying rooted in where we're at. It didn't make any sense to me, none whatsoever. So red flags are going off left and right. And, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm still in my excited mode. I'm loving meeting these amazing women from all over the globe. So I am just in overload, overload. Okay. I also at this time started to drop some subtle comments. In addition to all my positive comments in the Telegram group, I started to sort of drop a little bit, trying to like get it out. Is anybody else picking up on, you know, and it was subtle. It, it wouldn't have been able to be picked up by many um, because it wasn't my class and I didn't want to disrespect his class. But again, a real 5D person is going to be open to the individuals that's coming to his class for a two-way communication, okay? I get what teaching of the old was. I get that. But again, again, I didn't realize I was coming into something that was going to be, the approach was going to be so 3D. I never would have signed up. And I didn't think it would be that way because the guy teaching it presented himself to be a 5D and a 5D person would not shut out the other side of the communication. There was, there was no, there was no room for any of it. There was no asking even of comments. It was, it was just, it was immediately, and I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into the tricky part of that. In addition, more costs started adding up. Okay. First of all, the cost emotionally of joining yet another social program, Telegram. Didn't want to do it. Not excited to do it at all. I'm not a social media person. I'm not a technology person. I am an in-person person because you really know what something is and what, some, what something isn't when you get to see them in person and feel their energy in person. Okay. So I'm an in-person person. Didn't like joining Telegram. And then there were three other programs, at least, that we were going to have to join and pay. Uber suggests AWeber and SamCart. Now, I bring this up because later on in the course, it would be revealed that it is very likely that he is getting kickbacks from at least one of these companies. Very likely that every time we sign up, he's getting a kickback. And listen, hey, I'm just about transparency. I want to know that what I, I, I just think, I think that's sneaky. If you're getting kickbacks and you're not being transparent about how we're being used, you don't have my permission. Like, I just think that's tricky. I think that's tricky. Now, do I have any proof on that? I personally don't, but some others in the class claimed that they did. And he did say that he knew the founders of Samcart. So I don't know. I'm just saying that that became a lot more fishy 
later on, okay? All right, now it's when things really pick up. August 8th, August 8th, 